All right, guys, we had a big meeting with the bosses after the Spencer Dinwiddie reaction video, and they said, hey, guys, good job, really good feedback on that episode from the audience. But then they challenged us. They said, you guys need to get 30 subs on this next episode or else. Coop, I don't know what that means. I don't want to find out either, so please be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're keeping you guys up to date with all of the latest Mavericks news and rumors. On today's show, we have some news items to get to, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Little Olympic slash Mavericks news, Coop. Harrison Graham, Jeffrey Cooperstein, Dante Exum injuring his finger at an exhibition tune-up game. Uh, dislocated right index finger. Yes. That sounds pretty painful, and with it being on a shooting hand, he could miss some time here. Yeah, it sounds like he will miss some time, but it doesn't seem to be too serious. This is from ESPN Australia, and they say the expectation is that Exum will miss time. He's doubtful for Australia's Olympic opener versus Spain, but the Boomers, I love that they call themselves the Boomers, <laughs> their medical staff was comfortable with him remaining on the team with an eye toward an eventual return at some point in the group phase, and the Mavericks apparently gave them the green light uh, on Tuesday for Exum to continue playing. So it sounds like the Mavs are comfortable with him playing, uh, which gives me, you know, kind of peace of mind that there's nothing to be too concerned about here. Yeah, you know, if it was like a high ankle sprain or something where, like, further damage could happen, you know, you'd feel one way. But, you know, it, I, I'm not too concerned about this. I mean, even if he returns and, you know, it doesn't necessarily heal until the end or start healing till the end of the Olympics. Well, that still gives you a couple of months. So, um, you know, playing in the Olympics, once in a lifetime uh, opportunity for Absolutely. a lot of these guys. So doesn't sound that serious and uh, doesn't sound like he's going to play until he's at least closer to being healthy. So we'll certainly keep an eye on this as we got Dwight Powell and uh, Dante Exum in the yes, Olympics. Yes, no, no other Mavs in the Olympics. Kyrie kind of got snubbed. Uh, we don't have... Josh Green anymore, so no. that's Slo all you get. Slovenia didn't qualify, so... No Emmanuel Miller on Canada? <laughs> there you have it. Uh, type the Ds to wish Dante. Well, did I say D? D you for did. Dante, zero for, zero. for his or number? Or you can do either. I can't, I can't read, apparently. D for Dante, zero for zero, so uh, his jersey number. But uh, show him some love in the comments is the point. And, Coop, I, I think this is going to be interesting for him next year because is this... A flash in the pan, or can he do more of the same next year? Now, I don't expect him to shoot 49% from three. I know it wasn't a huge volume, but I would expect that to dip. But can he be a similar impact level player where he's like your fourth guard, good defender, and, you know, secondary ball handler and three-point shooter type? Yeah, I, I think with the signing of Spencer Dinwiddie that him and – Exum are going to compete for that fourth guard minutes. Uh, and it probably depends on matchup, how Jason Kidd wants to go. I think Exum gives you the more defense. He's going to push the pace a little bit more. Whereas if you're in the half court, Dinwiddie's kind of the guy that's going to unlock a defense there. So it'll probably be case by case matchup. Uh, but I did want to point out Exum did have injury problems last year. He missed 24 of 26 games at one point in the middle of the season. He just played in 55 out of a possible 82 regular season game. So while this injury doesn't seem like it's going to be a concern and he won't miss any time with the Mavericks, it is kind of a continuation of sorts of what happened last yeah, season. Yeah, and not only did he miss time, it was kind of mysterious for a while. Exactly. He was, like, questionable for, like, a month before he actually played. Remember? Oh, we were I, like, I, yeah. is tonight the night? Where, <laughs> where is he? Exactly. So I, I don't think this is, this is too much to write home about, but it is something to monitor at least because – I, I don't even remember what his injury was last year, but I know it lingered for a lot longer. I feel like than it was thought. like a lower back or something. It was some like deal where like it just wasn't like healing as fast yeah. as they thought. So um, I, I hope he gets to play in the group stage and that he's available for Australia and available for the Mavs to start the season. But yet another reason why they went out and got Spencer Dinwiddie just to add to that guard depth because if they didn't and Dante did have to miss time, you're relying on Jaden Hardy once again and. Look, we all love Hardy. I don't think the Mavs are ready to do that, though. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, you know, Jaden Hardy, while he can kind of light it up in short bursts, I think, like, from a consistency getting 15, 20 minutes per game, like, it's very hit and miss with yeah, him. Like, exactly. hey, that's just the reality of the situation. And plus, just to kind of wrap up this discussion – Kyrie Irving just had uh, a procedure he done did. on his hand. So like, and, and we don't know what his timeline looks like either. I know they've said something along the lines of 8 to 12 weeks. That kind of puts you right at the start of the season. Start of the season, exactly. So, 
Just more reasons why you signed Denwitty yep. is the point. So, uh, more storylines here, including a note on Melvin Ajinka. But uh, first, got to get you started with our sponsor, Game Time. We got a deal for you. Code Chat Sports gets you twenty dollars off for you first time customers when you download the Game Time app. Go to an event for the first time. Terms do apply there, but. Listen, uh, I told you guys the other day, I went to the Home Run Derby. I ended up going to uh, the Rangers Sunday game against the Orioles as well. Took my son PJ to his first game. And by the way, uh, just a little note for you guys. Uh, kids two, uh, under two uh, get in for free. So that's a nice little uh, opportunity for any of you who have babies at home. But uh, we got an awesome deal with game time. Uh, we had 10 of us go, uh, some extended family, and uh, I found an awesome little section, 10 seats together, and uh, found a really good price. And uh, did it last minute, did it. was like the night before. Uh, so uh, it was fun, uh, affordable, and uh, game time really hooked us up. And they can do the same for you. You and your girlfriend trying to go out, you're trying to get uh, a large group together, game time is going to get you last minute tickets for the lowest price guaranteed. So go check them out today. Download the game time app and start getting out. Go to some sporting events. You got the Cowboys preseason just around the corner. Uh, Mavericks will be here before we know it as well. Concerts. It's all fun. Promo code chat sports gets you $20 off. Terms apply. Okay. Melvin Ajinka Coop, who I think, you know, up and down in the summer league, uh, you'd have to remind me how you graded him out, uh, how you felt he, he played on your winners and losers uh, video. I, I said he was a loser simply because of th this exact reason. He's not going to be on the Mavs roster. Yeah, he didn't show enough where they're like, okay, we need to readjust our timeline here and, and keep him on the team this year. So he is going to sign another year in France. And I think this was always the hope and expectation. And you kind of got the best of both worlds, Coop. Uh, you signed a young, talented – or drafted a young, talented guy – you got him to play in the summer league, exactly. which was not initially expected, but you can still stash him in France for a year. And while it was very up and down, I thought he flashed some potential. Like You can tell this guy has an NBA body, if nothing 100%. else. 100%. Uh, I'm just not sure he has NBA shooting ability. I know he shot 35.5% uh, from three last year in France, but his shot kind of looked ugly in the summer league, yeah. if I'm being honest. We, he does have the athleticism uh, to be an NBA player. I do believe that. I just think he needs a lot of refining in his offensive game. Kind of like Omax does, but I think even it's even more raw than Omax is. So he has some work to do, um, and he won't play for the Mavs this year, which kind of begs the question to me, is he ever going to? I thought, and look, I'm not going to sit here and say I watched every minute of Summer League, but I, I watched a decent amount. I thought... While he looked extremely raw, he didn't look lost, yeah. if that makes sense. No, I like, think that's fair. I think he, he knew what he wanted to do. He's just not there yet. So, like, I'm, st I'm hopeful-ish. Now, if you're sitting here asking me what do I, like, what do I expect he's going to be, I, I, I have no idea. Like, no, yeah, no he problem. could be over here in two years and be in the rotation. He may never be over here. But I think there's a greater than 50-50 chance he comes over and is at least on this roster for a year to see what he can do. Uh, but that might be a couple years down the road. So, you know, I think this is one of those draft and stashes that there's actually hope with. Like, sometimes teams draft and stash, and you're like, there's no sometimes chance. Sometimes you draft Tottenham Singh. Yeah, exactly. Like, he's got an NBA frame. I think he's a decent-ish defender right now um, who obviously has a long way to go uh, to uh, develop offensively. But a guy like Dorian Finney-Smith basically couldn't shoot the ball when he went undrafted. Exactly. And for a stretch there, became one of the better 3 and D players in the league. So to act like it's impossible is not the case. And he's going to get to play a decent amount in France. So – Hopefully he develops uh, a, a little bit more this year, and you kind of revisit this topic next off season to see where he's at. Yeah, the Mavs hold his draft rights for as long as basically he is over there, so they can bring him over next year. They can bring him over three years from see, now. Nineteen, twenty. Yeah, he just turned twenty. Yeah, so. I mean he's got time. He's a baby, so um, you know I, I'm not going to sit here and act like, oh man, I, two years from now when a jink is in the full like. I think he's kind of icing on the cake. Yes. He could become something, but if he doesn't, You're not it's not a big over. deal whatsoever. So I, I think using that pick on that type of player, I think it, it goes to show Nico Harrison had a plan uh, because I don't think he really wanted to draft someone that had to take up a roster spot. No, I, I think this was part of the plan to take a guy who's going to play overseas for at least a season. And look, if if Ajinka plays well enough, then kudos to him, and he makes a name for himself and, and forces the Mavs' hand a little bit. But as 
I, I do think he will suit up for the Mavericks at some point. Like you said, it's probably a slightly more than 50-50. Yeah. Um, and eventually, I think he will get at least a chance over here. All right. Let us know what you guys think. And just to kind of circle back to what the expected final move of the offseason is going to be, all reports indicate, starting with Mark Stein a couple days ago, a few more have kind of leaked since then, that uh, Mark Keith Morris is going to return. Coop, uh, obviously, from an on-court perspective, he's not going to provide much. He'll play – Few and far between, you know, blowout games, et cetera, exactly. uh, uh, when these games are out of reach. Uh, but the the more consequential note, which we've talked about, but A.J. Lawson will be cut because he has a non-guaranteed uh, year left on his contract, yep. and everybody else is under contract for money. Uh, he's the 15th guy right now, so he's out. Morris will be in. Obviously, when that becomes official, we'll discuss again, but – this could happen at any moment. Yeah, it seems like it's only a matter of time. I'm really not sure what the Mavs are waiting for, honestly. Maybe they're trying to convince A.J. Lawson to, like, hey, once we cut you, we'll give Stay you a Stay out of two-way. E exactly. So I wonder if that's kind of just part of the waiting game as well. Um, maybe they're seeing what else is out there, but I would extremely doubt it at this point. Here's the thing. Lawson's fine. He's a replaceable player, man. He just is. He, He's I a two-way guy. Like, his ceiling is kind of what he got last year where he was on a two-way. They elevated him after the deadline because they had a spot available. That's what he is. He's yep. probably going to bounce around. He'll never be a rotation guy on a good team, I don't think. And, look, if you're A.J. Lawson, you should want to go to a bad team right now and, try, and, and try, try, to, get some try to get some playing time yeah. because, um, you know, if, if I was advising him, that's what I would do. And, look, I would like him back on a two-way. Like, sure. he, he's got some talent, but there's a clear ceiling there, right? And where the Mavericks are, there's just not going to be a window of opportunity for him in this in the next three to five years. So if you're A.J. Lawson, you're, you're probably preferring to go elsewhere. And I think th the whole thing with Markeith Morris is they really value his leadership and his off-court acumen versus A.J. Lawson, who may provide a little more on-court than Morris, but not enough to warrant uh, not re-signing Markeith. So I, I think that Markeith's going to be back here, and this one's pretty much a no-brainer as well. Yeah, I think it's it, – like you said, it's a matter of time. There's not really a rush because uh, I don't think there's a big market for Markeith Morris. Yeah. I think the only thing that could potentially change that is if a team was willing to sign both him and his brother. And well, I'm not sure that exists. Uh, that, that's actually a good point. I didn't think about that. And I, I guess another way they could go about this is they could sign Morris to a non-guaranteed deal, bring him into training camp, which is what they did last year. And so they could technically still have Lawson and Morris through the preseason and yeah. then cut Lawson. That could be a maneuver if, that they do as if, well. If an injury pops up or something, maybe that changes the roster construction. Exactly. So um, we'll see. It, it could come down to – they might be talking with Lawson and saying like, hey, what do you want? Do, yeah. you, do you want that? We're telling you right now that barring a surprise, Morris is going to be our last guy. But – we could non-guarantee and you could go through training camp or do you want us to cut you loose and explore other opportunities? Yeah. There so could be some of that negotiation. I'm too. sure that's part of the discussion and Nico Harrison and, and the Mavs will sort that out. And we, we should know something on this, I would imagine, pretty soon. Yeah. M for more, L for loss, and let us know who you guys would rather have and we'll see you next time. Be sure to hit that sub button.